Ditto. In this video, I'd like to continue on from my last video about inductor cores, and I'd like to show you some differences that you may find testing at different frequencies, as well as some stuff about split cores like this one, or like these ones here, which you find, I've got a lot of these out of a plasma TV, you often find them clicked onto leads like so. So we have here a yoke from a cathode ray tube. And the normal standard piece of wire didn't fit, so I've got a slightly longer one on there with six turns. And I also have a scope hooked up here on this side so we can um, see some coupling effects as well as compare the fre check the frequency of my um, inductor test here, which it does actually tell me at the moment I am testing at about 724 kilohertz. If I hold that button down, you can see that. Um, if you can't see the display on my um, induction meter very well and you'd like to, check your little settings sprocket wheel cog thingy down here and change your picture resolution to a higher one. It'll use up a bit more of your download and take a little bit longer to load, but you'll be able to see everything much clearer. So we can see there I'm testing at 7.2 micro henrys at, as I mentioned, 724 kilohertz. And we can see some coupling on the scope, and it's saying the same thing, 724 kilohertz. Now, if I start to move this apart, you can see it good. You can see that the induction starts to drop pretty quickly, and so does my coupling effect on my scope. So if I pull it right away till there's no more effect, then we drop down to 5.8 microhenry. So this one doesn't change a lot when you put the two halves together. But if I press this button here and go to measuring a high inductor, we lose our accuracy in our range here, but it still says about the same, 6 microhenry there. But now, look what happens if we bring them closer together. I think I may have knocked my scope loose there. Uh, there it is. We get much more coupling and a much slower waveform on our scope. So if I squeeze those together, I have had this up to, there we go, 16, 15, 16 microhenries of induction. I'm having issues with the scope connection there, but I think you get the idea. Oops, that was better for a moment. I think I've broken my wire. There we go. And that is at a frequency of 68 kilohertz this time. And that says the same thing there. Now, 69 kilohertz. So you can see at the slower frequency, we get a much higher coupling effect with this type of core. Alright, so let's check that on one of these other split cores. And we don't need the scope anymore, so I'll just get rid of that. So this is one. I have one of these white containers. I believe it came off this loom here. It's probably in a plasma TV, I believe. So I'll hook that up. I'm going to be careful not to cross my leads over which would thus create another turn in my coil. And we'll go to the low ranges for starters. So that's testing at 757 kilohertz. And it's saying we're getting just over three microhenries there. Watch what happens when I add the other half. Now we're getting 38 microhenries. And it's dropped the frequency a bit. It's probably, I'd say this one adjusts the frequency to get the best reading it can, the highest reading it can. We're down to 50, 561 kilohertz. You can see there's a much bigger difference there. The other one we got two microhenries. This time we're getting over 10 times the microhenries. We're getting an extra 30 or so. So it does depend on the core, and I'm not sure what's going on there. It may be the materials they're made from. But I thought that was interesting and worth checking. 
Oh, and we better check that at the lower frequency. So that's three micro henrys there. And we're getting about the same, maybe slightly better again at the lower frequency, but 38 micro henrys. Okay, so, and we'll just compare that to a standard round copper slug with the same number of turns. I have compared these wires, you get much the same results, the variation's tiny. And with the unbroken plain ferrite bead, we're getting 59 micro henrys at the low frequency, which in this case is just under 50 kilohertz. And at the higher frequency, we're getting 53 micro henrys at 500 kilohertz. So pretty much the same there. Again, slightly better at the lower frequency for the ferrite. Yeah, this one's a powdered iron core, which I actually purchased from an electronics store. Uh, as you can see, these guys are pretty lousy. They make good chokes. So it gets 4.8 kilohertz, 4.8 microhenries at the high frequency. 742 kilohertz. And we're getting 4 microhenries at 74 kilohertz. So hardly any change with the frequency change on those powdered iron cores. Now all these cores over here, I'll just zoom in over there for you. All these cores over here, yellow, this green with the blue on one side, this plain dark, darker blue here, they're all pretty much the same, they're all much lower than ferrite, about a half to a quarter. The inductor of ferrite, the magnetic permeability, sorry. Okay, very similar. I wouldn't be going for these guys for anything with it, it's a boost circuit. They're good for choking applications. Much the same for this one with the shiny black inside. It's clearly not ferrite if you look in there closely. I don't know if my camera's going to let you see that. But that's some sort of black paint or black epoxy in there, not black ferrite. So it's some sort of powdered core as well. Uh, let's check it out. Seven micro henrys at 730 kilohertz. And slightly worse for this one at the lower frequency, six micro henrys at 73 kilohertz. So some of them do work better at high frequencies. Um, here's one of the dark green ones out of a PC power supply. These guys are really good. They have very high magnetic permeability and you get very good results with your inductor cores. Now this one at high frequency, oops, sorry about that, I forgot to zoom you in. Zoom you out. Um, this one at high frequency gives 212 micro henrys at 31 kilohertz and at higher frequency of 100 89 kilohertz, nearly 190 kilohertz. We get a much higher induction value of 646 microhenries. So at a higher frequency, these dark green ones are much, much better. And they're very sensitive too, as you can see, just by handling it, I get quite a different range of results there. Now, one that was a bit of a surprise to me was this little grey one, also from the PC power supply. And it does have some numbers on it, if my camera is going to focus for you. There you go. In case anyone wants to look that up. Now, it, it is really, really light in weight. I did actually weigh this in comparison to a few of these smaller ones here. And these guys are all four, five, six grams. I'm going to try this one as well. This one's only about two grams. It's really light. It feels like an air core or plastic, but it is magnetic. It's not very strongly magnetic. It shakes off pretty easy compared to, say, the ferrite or some of the powdered cores, which stick really well. They're quite hard to pull off these neo magnets. This guy, it's not very strong magnetically, but it's obviously got metal in there. 
and it's nearly as good as those green cores. So at our high frequency we're getting 84 microhenries at 445 kilohertz. And at low frequency it's actually quite a lot better. We're getting 198 microhenries for 32 kilohertz. One other one that I was quite surprised by was this one here. Um, I believe this one came from a plasma TV. Um, and I have joined those two up like you would to make a jewel thief out of it. Um, I do also find them in, mi in microwaves, slightly smaller ones, but there's some out of a plasma off a plasma board. Same thing. Now I thought they were air cores, but surprise, surprise, the magnet sticks to them. And it's not sticking to the wire, it doesn't stick as well where the wire's over it, there's too much space. Where I can get the magnet on the plastic, it, does, it is just strong enough to hold it. And I haven't got one out of that I can find at the moment where I can thread a wire through there for you and do a comparable test, but I was very surprised. That's 52 millihenries. That's a whole degree of magnitude up. It does have a lot of turns on it, I'll give you that. At the low frequency of 2 kilohertz. It's testing it very low. Change that. And we're still getting 52 millihenries at 21 kilohertz. So it's dropping it. At, it likes a low frequency quite clearly, these ones. But, um,. So if you're salvaging these guys, they would be really good for jewel thieves. Or some sort of um, simple blocking oscillator boost circuit. So your greys. Greys are good, they go better at high frequency I believe. You might have to check back on that. But anyway, frequency matters. Split cores have different results. And some cores go better at high frequencies, and some cores go better at low frequencies. So if you can look up the data sheets on your cores, it's well worth doing. Otherwise, it doesn't hurt to have a um, half-DC induction meter. Okay, thanks for watching.